Are you a feminpreneur who wants to use the power of podcasting to boost your business? In this episode, I brought Nina Makari, who is a visibility specialist, and we chatted about the two aspects of podcasting. The ones for who wants to start a podcast or already have a podcast and want to improve, what is important to do, and also when you are and want to be a guest, what is needed to make for you to leverage your pitching. I was telling that you are an expert, a visibility expert, and you help entrepreneurs using the podcast, the this amazing tool podcast is, uh, to leverage their personal brands, their business, and uh, boost their visibility, right? So tell us a little bit about that. How did you start it? Why did you went through that path? Hello, Andrea, and thank you so much for having me. It's so exciting to be here in your community because I'm an introvert as well. And I started my business. Actually, it was not in my plans to have a business, but after being a stay-at-home mom for more than five years, I went back to a regular job, but I felt so trapped. I was looking for more freedom and flexibility. And I just had in mind this idea that I could help other mompreneurs who were a little bit farther ahead than I was. And this is how I started. It was an idea only, but I was so that I can make this work. I was relying on my admin background because I used to work for the government in my country. So I knew that there has to be something that I could offer. And I started as a general VA, but what I found was that there was a lot of competition and I did not know how to stand out. So I decided to niche down because everybody talks about it and I so I knew like my I knew who was going to be my ideal client I wanted to work with moms because I can connect with them I can relate to their struggles and their dreams that was clear but what I was struggling with was the type of services that I was going to offer So every money I was making, I was investing in different courses. I tried Pinterest, I tried building funnels, WordPress websites. And then at some point I stumbled on podcast pitching and I started working with an amazing client. We are still friends to this day and I really loved it. And what I loved about it is that back then when I was a kid, In my childhood, we were a communist country, and my grandfather used to listen to this radio broadcasted from the U.S., and they they were talking about a free world. And I had no idea what that means. I had no idea how other people were, were living abroad because we were not allowed to travel. And I remember how that sparked my curiosity of how it's going to feel to live abroad, how it's going to be to meet other people, how other people live, what do they do? And I was intrigued and I had this idea in my mind. And later on, when I was older, I still had this dream that I want to work internationally. Before having kids, my dream was to work at the European Union. And I did a traineeship there, but then I was married and my husband was not interested in living abroad. So I came back because I wanted to have kids. That was also one of my dreams. And I said, okay, I want to have the kids. And then I will put my dreams on pause and see what is going to happen after that. And I'm so blessed to have two amazing kids. And once I decided, okay, it's time for me to figure out what I want with my life, I started working with a coach. 
Um, but then we had to move to a different city due to my husband's new job. And as I mentioned, I got that job, but I quit after nine days because I had this dream that I could support other moms. And it really, I enjoy what I do and it fulfills me. And still I'm working internationally. I'm able to travel and I love the freedom and the flexibility. And I love this medium because every time I listen to podcasts, I get inspired, I get motivated, and it allows me to dream big. Yes. Oh, so many share. So, so amazing. And uh, you sharing about your grandfather. I, I always believe that our. Um, our brand, a personal brand story, it all roots, what we do nowadays, it all roots to childhood. More and more, I have that belief. Many times we don't see it directly, but our personality, our beliefs, and many of our values were forged in childhood. Of course, we change, we experience things through life and things change and we evolve, but many are, of who we are are set in childhood. And it's so amazing that you could connect the, the dots because many, many people don't connect right to the, 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 the dots. <laughs> and that was, yeah. yes, yes. And even for me, even in my past job, um, my past business, I understood that it was set uh, what I, I was doing, I was um, um, a creator, a uh, jewelry designer, and it was very attached with things I, I was to do in childhood. And even now with the, the personal image, with the photography, it's very rooted also in childhood and teenage age. And it's so, so funny when we start to understand that we, what we are doing and when we start a business not just for the money and for the transformation we see we are so passionate about because it's rooted there it's not just one thing that you we saw that could make us money it, it's rooted there when we find the root we we get more passionate about and um, i want to, to ask you how did you, you started with with the podcast and you tried many many things, but when did you understood that you could you wanted to go more on that more deep and you could help people? Did people start to to ask you for help about that? How how did that went? So I. I met this one client and back then I remember that I was still struggling with confidence and with putting myself out there. I thought that, you know, showing up on videos like this one is not for me, is only for other people who are extroverts, who are, you know, bubbly. Like my client was very energetic and she loved being in the spotlight so i thought that i am meant to do the work behind the scenes and business owners like her are meant to be out there but then and then she referred me to a friend of hers and this is how i realized that yes this is what i want to do this is what i like i enjoy supporting women who are courageous and want to put themselves out there. And then actually my this first client of mine at some point did a short program, a four week program. Uh, it was called Shine, something about Shine and Show Up, something like that. I don't remember exactly. And I was like, you know what? I Maybe I'm not like you, but still, I want to be a be better business owner. I want to know how you do it because I was seeing her all over the place. Like she was on Instagram. She was on Facebook. Every time I was opening an app, a Facebook group, she was there. And I was like, teach me. I want to 
know how to do this. And I think this is one of the important things that we need to invest in our businesses. So it's investment and then it's also courage. Courage to take action because otherwise you will stay stuck for a long time. So this is how I started. I mean, I it was this idea that I can help other women. And then I found exactly what I can do, what I love, what's fulfilling. But then again, I was keeping myself stuck because after being a stay at home mom for more than five years i feel that i missed a lot of adult conversations and i felt that i am not worthy i felt less of myself because i thought that i don't know you need to be someone who is as i said very energetic and i wasn't that type of person but then i this client and then mentor told me you know what you need to be exactly who you are and this is how you need to show up on social media or wherever you show up because this is who you are you don't need to be someone else and i realized that she was right i don't need to turn into someone that i'm not and even if i'm an introvert i can show up i can have conversations with business owners like you and then after that, it's my job to schedule some time to reset and recover and do whatever it takes to feel, to have energy again. So after this interview, I'm going to have some time with my daughter because she's at home, she's on vacation. So we are going to spend a little bit of time. I won't be able to do some work because I need this time to recharge. So uh, this is what I think that is important to invest in your business and also to have this courage to realize that, that no one else can do this for you. And, and when you are able to put yourself out there, you will be able to connect with other people who feel the same. And actually, the thing that helped me uh get over these fears even though at the beginning it was not easy it was to stop thinking about myself and think about that one person that i could help and support if she's going to show up and she's going to watch something that i put out there so it's not about myself it's about helping other people yeah oh my gosh you tackled so many great points and we are very very in alignment <laughs> i i love that and you tackle many many things i i'm always saying you don't many people think that for them to show up with face or with not not without face you need to have confidence to shop. Yes, it's important, but confidence, it's a muscle. You work on it and it will grow. The more you do, the better you become. It's not perfect. It won't be perfect. And this is a great example of today. It's not perfect, but we are doing it. And it's already great insights here. In, in just a few moments, minutes, We you already shared uh, so many great in, um, uh, insights and uh, what is important to have is truly is courage from the moment you have the courage to and make the decision to start moving start taking action to show up things change and you start building the confidence muscle so so important other thing you talked about is putting time to rest. I do the same. We are introverts and in this community, we are introverts. If you don't put time aside for you to rest, it's the, you need to see this as um, a business task because you are the, the per person. If you don't, mostly if you don't have a team, if you are doing all alone, putting time 
blocks for you to rest is still a business activity because it will benefit in the small and long road, right? In the, the right way and after. It will always benefit your business because if you are not okay, your business will not be okay, right? Mostly if it depends on you 100%. And it's so important. Uh, uh, the, the ones who are here already know that I've lost times for taking care of myself and taking care of yourself. It will have different uh, aspects to each any of us, right? Because even introverts are not all equal. You need to find what works for you and not. But yes, schedule time for 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 it. And other things so important you said. It's not about us. It's about the, the people we want to impact. Once you start to understand that, you will forget that your me your hair is messy, you have herpes, <laughs> and you show up still because you have a message to share, right? I could make an excuse because today I'm not in a perfect place. I'm not in the perfect mood, uh, mood, no, I'm in a good mood, but I'm not in the best shape. My hormones are all over the place, and I could try to schedule to another time, but I honor your time. Yeah, I honor you being willing to, to share these amazing um, insights, and I honor the community also, because they will learn so much from this. And one thing I also believe that is missing, most of for me, because I'm a procrastinator by nature. I I work very well when I have the, the, the date is coming and I rush all the things to, to the limit and then I work very, but then my energy depletes, right? And one thing I understood is that if I don't put a date on it, things don't happen. And do you believe this is something also missing for women not starting to show up on podcasts or wherever the ways they can show up? But now we are talk talking about podcasts. Do you believe they are not starting to show up in podcasts going to be invited or ask for the invite because they don't put um, a date on it? They don't schedule time for it? Yes, I think this could be one of the reasons is because maybe they think, oh, like this is for someone else, not for people like me, as I mentioned. Or this might be that, yes, I need to wait for the invite. But until you are going to get those invites, you need to put yourself out there, whether it is on coffee chats or networking events, you need to let people know that you are available to share your expertise. Because otherwise, how are people going to find you if you don't mention this anywhere, right? Because um, and most of the times when podcast hosts uh, will get um, those pitch emails, they are going to do their homework and are going to check you out on social media. So if you are not putting content out there showing them that you are an expert, you talk about X, Y, Z, this is how you help people, they don't know if you are a good fit for them. They are looking for experts. They are looking for people helping their audience in a different way. And if you don't talk about it, you are not going to get those invites. And yes, uh, I totally can relate to what you said. I mean, this week on Monday and Tuesday, I barely did a few things. And then yesterday and today, I was able to accomplish a lot of things because I have a deadline approaching. So I, I, can, I can relate to that, but indeed, and one thing that is important for me is that I had to learn to stick to my own commitments because I tend to prioritize the client, the work that I do for my clients and then myself and my business are left over there. But I had to learn that I need to make my business a priority 
because otherwise, you know, one client can come today, but then in two months they can go away because maybe they don't have funds to invest in my services. So what will I do then if I don't keep talking about what I do and my work? So it's important to put ourselves out there and to, as you said, um, add those small tasks in our calendar. Maybe we don't have the courage to show up on podcast interviews, but maybe we start with a one minute video on our Instagram, or you can even create a reel without using your face. So that's not a problem. But you need to um, do this as a habit. You need to get into this habit of putting yourself out there and talking about your work. And then you will get to a point where you maybe will find a biz bestie. This is another way that I got more courageous and more confident because meeting with her every week on video and talking about the things that we wanted to accomplish. Maybe, you know, the first time I didn't accomplish what I said. The second time I didn't, but then the third time I felt a little bit embarrassed. You know, I said that I'm going to do this and now it's the third time I'm showing up and I cannot tell you that I didn't do it, right? So I'm going to do it it's like putting a little bit of fire when you have an accountability body or maybe you join a program where you have a coach that can help you so it's important to use some support because just as you said being solopreneurs it's difficult because you have no one to talk to right you Yes, I might talk to my husband, but he doesn't understand in depth what I do and what kind of support I need, what kind of help. But having these conversations with another mompreneur who really understands our struggles and what if, like, my best best is also an introvert, so she knows how I feel, she understands, it's so important. So. Yes, I think this, um, how do I call it? It's maybe lack of the unknown, I'm not, not lack, maybe the fear of the unknown can stop you. But then you also need you put, to put yourself in those situations where you are going to get uncomfortable. Because the first time, it's going to feel so uncomfortable when you are going to show up on a podcast interview or when you are going to record your first podcast episode. It's going to feel so uncomfortable and you are going to feel so embarrassed. But then everybody says that if you don't do this first step, you are not going to get to your 100th step where you are going to be so much better and so much confident. Yes. So true, so true. And the thing is, yes, it's uncomfortable. It, it uh, depletes all kinds of feelings and emotions. But one thing is, it's good, it's great. It's because when we start, not that many people see us. When we are getting better, more people will see us, right? <laughs> and many, many people don't go go back, which is good for them to go back. So. Because many times we have the we we compare with the one hundred uh, <laughs> step they are, and we are in the two three steps, right? And we forget to go back to their first steps to compare with that. We need to compare. We shouldn't compare. We should compare with ourselves, right? To see how much we evolved, but. And personally, we will compare either ways. So it's important for us to go back and see. It's good for us to see what is possible, what others achieved. But it's also important to see it's in alignment with our vision of success, right? Because many people are telling stories of what success is. But it's important for us to define what success is for us. 
my vision of success will be different from yours, from uh, Lisa High, Prisca High, it will be different from, uh, from yours. So it's very important to, to have that in mention. Tell me, uh, Nina, people, when they start working with you, what normally is the, the first thing they are going uh, to, what are the, the things they want to work in? It's the, the pitching uh, or for them to be guests in other places or is for them to, mostly for them to start uh, or improve their podcast? So it really depends on where they are in their business journey. Uh, some people want to start with podcast guesting and guesting on other shows because it's easier for them. They don't have to manage all the back end of a podcast. When you are showing up as a guest, yes, there are some things that you need to do in order to be prepared and show up as an expert. And there is this work of searching for the right podcast for you. But when you have your own podcast, there is more time involved. You need to do more things. And it really depends on their commitment to consistency because it's easier to have someone maybe to support you with podcast pitching and then you show up and you talk about the mainly the same thing but it will be um, how do i say not different but you are going to customize your main theme based on uh, that specific audience you're going to put yourself in front of. But when you have your own podcast, you mainly talk with the same people and the new ones that are going to find you. But you will have to think about new episodes, new things that you need to put out there. So it depends on how how much time do you have available? How much time do you want to invest in the research? And in, I think it's important for you to also do marketing research because this is how you are going to put out their great content that your ideal client is looking for. So it depends. Usually, and then I had also podcasters who already had their own podcast, but they wanted to spread the word on other people's show. So they were interested in podcast pitching. So it, I don't think there is a right or wrong way. It's just what you feel it's best for you at this stage in your business. Great. Yes, and I believe we mainly start being a guest. There's one business or other that I, I noticed they, they started right away with a, a podcast. It's also very attached with our personality, I, I think, right? Uh, and the, the, the way we consume content. Um, for, for the ones who are wanting to be guests, you talk about about one thing that I found very interesting and I I experienced it myself. I thought, oh my gosh, now I'm going to to spread my my message, which is great, but I'm always saying the same. <laughs> but what I found interesting before I, I thought, oh, but I'm always saying the same. How how can it will be boring? But it will be boring kind of for me because I'm saying the same thing I'm say like this because it's all it's not always the same depending on, on the questions uh, people make us uh, we we bring stories and uh, other aspects we didn't share before so it, it won't be everything the, the, always the same and the, you you said another important thing is that we need to adapt. To the to the audience that will listen listen to us, right? Uh, do you find uh, or do your people uh, find that uh, difficult to um, to adapt to to different audience? Um, what they they need uh, more help with? 
uh, when they reach to you? Is the pitching part what, what they will talk about at the end? How do they address people to convert those listeners to possible um, followers and uh, clients? What, what is the, the main uh, thing normally they, they ask you? It's to, to find a way to better share their message or more the, the pitching part? I think it's more the pitching part because once you nailed your message, it's easier to customize it because usually it's connected to one of your previous versions, right? Because I am my ideal client, but, you know, a few... <laughs> yeah, exactly. But then in this pitching part, um, I learned that a lot of people don't know how to pitch themselves and then they don't know where to find those uh, opportunities or they don't have the time, they don't want to do it. And this is where they could use more support because when it comes to your message, I think it's something that you put out there anyway. If you use social media or if you have an email list and you email them on a regular basis, it's, as you said, it's about using stories. It's about using our current experiences. So you talk about your struggles and your dreams. It's easier. But then when it comes to teaching, usually people think that, oh, well, if I'm going to send a pitch, I will talk about myself and that's enough. I need to tell them how amazing I am. I'm going to brag my brag about myself. But this is not going to land you. It's not going to secure you this podcast appearance because people are not interested in having selfish people on their podcast. They need uh, guests who are willing to help and support. And if all you talk about on your podcast is about yourself, then what are we doing here? It's, it's not helpful. So, yes, this is what I find that usually my clients need support with pitching. Mm. And uh, there, there are two types of pitching, right? The, the one you do when you want to be a guest. And depending on the podcast, some allow you to pitch at the end, right? Yeah. For you to, to convert. So according to those two types of pitching, what are two or three things that need to be there? In, in the pitch, you in mean? The pitch. Yes. Well, um, you need to be listening to at least one, two episodes. And you can put this on speed. You don't have to, you know, spend hours and hours. I Anyway, I like to listen to podcasts and videos on, on speed because I feel that I save more time. And um, so to me, this pitch that you are sending is just a conversation opener. So it's not the defining, I would say. It's just here's where you start your conversation. And then if you get a yes, you are going to move that conversation in a deeper way. And you can ask that host questions like how is the flow of your podcast like is there something that I can share or I'm allowed to share or maybe I'm not I've seen podcast hosts who have their application form on their website and they will put in there um, no self promo is allowed in my podcast so you will know from the start that they are not going to allow you to promote yourself and i think it's very important to agree on those rules because otherwise you are not going to get a second chance and i think it's important especially when you have a good connection with a podcast host to maybe continue to develop that relationship what i've seen um with my clients is that other 
collaborations were developed based on a podcast interview they had. So if there is connection, if there is um, the businesses are complementary, then you can do other things. But this is why it's important to follow the rules. And if you are not sure about something, feel free to ask because there are so many podcast styles people are so different and it's important to respect them and to treat them as they would like to be treated yes for sure for sure i i like to to have um a connection before not just apply just to fill the the space or the the gap uh, because I know uh, podcasts need guests also to mm. to to grow and keep running, but it's also important to to find find alignment uh, and not just being doing it just for the sake of showing up for your business, right? Uh, it it needs to to have a, a, a connection. And normally the the ones I I apply to or the ones uh, I invited to because when you start applying and people start seeing you showing up in other uh, ones you never know who is listening right so afterwards i already ha have been um, invited to to others and normally i don't accept right away i start to build a connection to see also if we we vibe uh, because for in my case, I'm a very sensitive person, and I I need to feel the 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 person. And if something is not in alignment, then I know that the conversation will not flow in the best way, and uh, um, I won't show up in the best way either. Right? It all impacts. It all have uh, an intention, and when we don't follow mostly women have the sixth sense like <laughs> like everyone says right our intuition uh, we need to also respect that and be in alignment with not only our essence but our values also be all all things in, in alignment so now i want to, to ask about who has podcasts many many we have different kinds of podcasts, right? There are ones that are all guests um, podcasts. Others don't have guests. Others are a mix. Why? What do you think it works best normally? It, mostly for entrepreneurs. Hmm, that's that's tricky because it it really. I don't think there is a rule, and. It, it really depends on what your goal is, what your why is. So I yeah, I don't have a straight answer because if you feel better just having solo episodes and you don't want to manage all the guests and who's coming when it's coming, if maybe they don't show up because there are situations where guests don't show up or even host don't show up for the scheduled interview. So maybe you just think that, you know what, I just want to put out there uh, 50, 20 minutes episodes every single week. This is what I can commit to. This is what I'm doing. This is how I can support my community. And this might work for you. But maybe you want to have interviews, you enjoy deeper conversations, you like to connect with other people, then maybe interviews will work better for you so there is again you have to test and see how you feel and then to see how your community will respond mm. and that's great because again it's very aligned with our personality with our mm. essence right mm -hmm. and you you brought uh, an important thing our why uh, many people think the the why about the the overall business but even for every area of our business there needs to be a, a why and an intention and that's that's very great because the the intention of podcasts are not always the, the same depending on the the feminine right 
that's that's really great and i hope this helps because again many many times we start in a, in a road then we see other people doing other ways and we think we need to follow that road also and uh, when we are sure about the, the the goal we have the why we are doing the thing it's it's easier to 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 follow and not go out of the go try to grab the shiny ball <laughs> yes and yeah. then also the data it's important because oftentimes i let myself guided by my emotions and this is not the right way of doing a business but when you look at the data and if you see if you have listeners and people are interested in what you have to say maybe they message you on social media they respond to the emails that you send about your podcast episode then you will know this is the right thing but if you have no feedback or maybe you decide to do a survey and you get their feedback then you will know how to move forward but yeah i think data is important Yes, do you do you feel or do you experience that your uh, your clients don't look data how how often they should? Well, usually they look no, it's not healthy to look at your data every single day <laughs> because yeah. But I think it's important to look every 90 days and then based on the episodes that are most listened to then you can see what content resonates best and then this is how you can create more of that content it's important to to look at it i think every 90 days um it could go as well with your business plan like you know when you do like a review you could do that for your podcast as well okay great so let's talk a little bit about uh, a buggy word or it's not a buzzword but a word a word it's not a word is three <laughs> that many people are don't know it well or have afraid of seo how is seo important seo for the ones who don't know is search engine optimization and Tell us, tell us about that. <laughs> yes, I think it's important. It's important for you to do some research, even if you are a guest. If you, for example, when you pitch yourself, you could add potential titles that you know are SEO based. Then obviously that podcast episode that will be available on the podcasting platforms and maybe they will also put uh, show notes on their website this will help you more i mean more people will learn about you because you have this content that is going to show up on searches so i think it's very important and then also when you have um your own podcast again it's very important to to use seo content and i think very recently i heard i think it was in a youtube video they were talking about not only the searches that you do on google but then there are also social searches like searching for keywords on um, tiktok and instagram but it depends on the age range of your ideal clients this is for younger generations of course who spend more time on social media platforms and this is how you will come up with your content that is searched for because they spend their time over there so if you have ideal clients that are younger then maybe it would be important for you to pay attention to to the content that is already on those social media platforms and see what they are looking for so that you can create your own content based on your experiences and expertise mm, yes. yes on tiktok i'm i'm not there i'm not 
that used to it, but on Instagram I already heard that it they are paying more attention to SEO also, and it's important to put keywords related to what we do. Uh, normally, on our captions, if we, we elaborate the captions a little bit more, the, the description of our posts and the the reels and uh, all all the the media inside um, Instagram, we already tend to put some uh, some um, keywords right but but yes uh, that um, that is very important and uh, on uh, on youtube also right uh, youtube podcasts are more searchable uh, nowadays youtube also has the the podcast option do you see many people using that or they still prefer the podcast with no no image no video well, uh, most of my clients are moms and they are busy with their life and businesses. Uh, so, so far, I don't have clients who do video podcasts. So they put on YouTube only the audio version at this mm. moment. But again, it depends on who your ideal listener is. If they like to search for th things on YouTube, then yes, you should be there. And also if I don't know. I don't put makeup every single day, to be honest. Right? But yeah, it takes a while to get to this point where you show up as you are. And then I think that a lot of people will don't do certain things because they don't have the time, you know, to do their hair, to put makeup on. And this is why they don't show up on videos. So, yeah, it's. It depends on your levels of seeing your face on video because I remember there was a time where I just couldn't watch the videos that I recorded. But then the more I had to, you know, put captions and edit videos of myself, I got used to it. So now I have no problem. But uh, um, even not long ago, I had a conversation with a potential client and she told me, oh, well, I need to uh, have my hair cut because I cannot record new episodes until my hair will be done. And I'm like, do your people care about your hair or care about your message? Right. What's more important? Yeah. Then, yeah, this is how you decide. And yes. And again, it's your ideal client. Do they show up on YouTube or do they, you know, listen to podcasts when they commute or when, for example, when I do dishes or do laundry, that's when I'm listening to podcasts and I want to listen. I don't want to watch something because I spend a lot of time on my uh, desk. I don't want to spend even more time watching videos. Mm -hmm. So it's important yes. to know your listener, yes, your ideal client. Mm -hmm. Yes, and yes, I already saw some some podcasts where the, on YouTube where they put the, the cover photo and it's only uh, the the sound. I consider that for for uh, because the the guests' lives. I have on a, a podcast there, and I considered that, but I thought, oh, I already have the video, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we are showing up, and it's another way for people to know my my guests, not only with a picture, because many times we, you, we, you, we use the best pictures to promote ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's also important for people to know the raw us, and uh, not always we are in the the best uh, days, but still, uh, as you said, what's more important is the message you send. And even me being a personal brand image mentor, uh, what I work is it's very much not to, for you to have the perfect look or the look professional look, right? But for you to be confident and comfortable with your self image so you can go on camera, being on picture or being on video and have confidence to share the message because the message is the more important thing. And as you said previously, 
the most important thing is the people we are going to impact it's not about us it's about them right so so yes that's that's so so great and um, to finish up we are here almost an hour but it's, it's such no. an amazing <laughs> it's such an amazing conversation i don't see comments here and i i can tell you that i was trying to log through the computer but something happened and i put the wrong uh, password so i cannot see comments right away if there is any comments uh, hi diane she's watching also i think um if there is any questions i we will come back later tell me what i will also share all nina um links where you can find her, uh, follow her. Uh, tell me you have a membership, right? Tell us about that. Yeah, so it started with this idea that I was meeting my best bestie and I was asking her for advice on productivity and time management because she's a mom of four and I am a mom of two. And I was like, how do you even do it? Because I have two kids and... I don't, I'm not able to manage all the things. How do you do it? And then she was asking me about visibility and I was uh, sharing with her some summits and some bundles opportunities and she applied and she was so excited that she was able to grow her email list. And then we thought, well, what if we are going to partner and we are going to start this membership where you offer your support with productivity and time management and I offer my support helping people find those visibility I mean not find uh, even sending people people I mean people business owners like us those um, visibility opportunities and they all they have to do is apply to the ones that are a good fit for them so this is how the idea of creating a membership was born. And I show up on live calls every other week. And then my biz bestie will show up the rest of the weeks. So we have every week a live call. And then weekly, I send um, via email these opportunities so that you can select the ones that are a good fit for you. There are bundles summits and podcasts that, that are looking for guests and this is what we do i did not want to launch a membership where you have to watch video after video after video we are so overwhelmed with content and now it's summer we don't have time for that but what i want is to implement things and to help our ideal clients our mompreneurs get more visible even if it's summer so if you put yourself out there in a summit or in a bundle you can see your email grow email list grow and you can connect with more ideal clients but you don't need to watch more videos I, yeah, I think that's, that's a really great. What's a, a great collaboration, right? Is your this uh, um, bestie um, on your country also? No, no, she's in the US, and I'm in Romania. Oh, that's. Uh... I love working on internet because of this. We can connect and uh, relate with so many people from so many different places. Indeed. That's so amazing, the power of yes, the internet. Even, even if we have, have different cultural backgrounds, we realize that as mothers, we have the same struggles as business owners, as introverts. We have so many similarities. And it made sense for us to do something together. Yes, and that's one thing I I love to work with women. And nowadays I search more women to to learn from because they understand better our struggles, being mothers or not, because women and men are different. Mompreneurs are different. In, introverts are different. So when we we 
can fit all the things we are because we are not just one thing right we have we are a combo a mix of so many different things and it's important to to find the people that can understand us because you can have the best uh, strategy but if the strategy doesn't fit your personality and your um, lifestyle even and your business style it won't work because i say everything works but you need to find what works for you right and i don't work for everyone right and i'm not the best fit for everyone and not all everyone will be the best fit for me and that that's okay and that's more and more i say there is no competition after all because we are all different and uh, we can serve we can do the same and serve different people different ways it's so so, so, so amazing yes yes um, yes. Thank you so much. For, do you want to add anything that I didn't ask that you feel that is important to to leave in, in this uh, live? Tell me. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I really enjoyed this conversation, Andrea. Um, what I would add is just to uh, decide that you want to be more visible and start with small steps. You don't have to do all the big things at once. I, what I find is that for me, baby steps work best. So that when I have this goal, I try to break it down and see what is the next thing that I can do at this stage where I am right now. So you don't have to get those 100 steps this week. You can set a goal for the next three months and take action every single day. So it's important, as I said, be courageous, be brave, put yourself out there because your message needs to be heard. There are people out there looking for what you have to say for encouragement, for support. So don't be afraid to show up. Yes, don't be afraid to show up because there are many people they are showing up courageously and they may not be the best fit for your ideal client and your mm -hmm. ideal client is waiting for you. So yes, show up. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I will catch up to see if there is any question. If you are watching this on replay, Hashtag replay and leave your questions if you feel I didn't uh, ask anything that you feel important for Nina to talk about. Ask and we will come up, uh, come, come again <laughs> and, and watch the, the questions. Thank you so much for, for being here, Nina. It was such a pleasure. And after all, this was not perfect but work it perfectly <laughs> yes i i enjoyed seeing you outside and i think it's so brave of you i don't think that i would have the courage to put myself <laughs> somewhere in a park so i'm also learning from you and you know see other people doing things in different situations than uh, a sparks idea and it's so helpful. So thank you. It was such a pleasure sure. to talk to you today. Sure. Thank you, Andre. Thank you.